very excited for game week to be here. Uh, I thought camp went very well. thought we got a lot done in camp. Really proud of how the new guys come in and fit in and uh, providing some depth. And even our young guys who weren't starters that we're counting on. I, was, I don't think we had a bad area of camp as far as I'm concerned about the development of some of our young players, especially at linebacker. Young secondary talent, young backup talent up front on the DL. Very happy with the receiver development and the things we had, backup tight ends, uh, and those young running backs, Pender and Cook, and those guys stepping up in that regard. And I thought Sean McGuire had a uh, good camp. Uh, our depth in the offensive line has been the best it's been since we've been here by far, and very excited about that. And uh, you know, our quality of our scout team has even went up because of the quality of people you're working against on the other side. It will be really good players here in the future. So from that standpoint, very excited. Now I think we're ready to turn our focus away from each other, tired of hitting on each other all the time, and play a game. Again, we're playing a great Oklahoma State team. Mike Gunny's a great football coach. I've been there nine years now and uh, done a great job. Uh, won 41 games the last four years. Uh, another 10-win season last year, a couple years ago, we're a game away from playing for it all, played in the Cotton Bowl, where had a chance to be. I mean, they were, I think, 10-1. And then Oklahoma had a tough loss to Oklahoma in a great bowl game with Missouri. But I mean, I mean, they've had a heck of a season. They've got great players. Uh, always has good speed, good athleticism there. Runs a great system on offense. Very diverse. Uh, great loop. Gets to the edges. Got speed. Got some new guys in heel. They can really get there. Plus the older backs. Uh, they will catch the ball very well. Run the ball defensively. Very ball play extremely hard. Multiple looks, blitzes. Uh, great cover. Had a first round pick last year. But those corners that are in there this year played a lot. And, very athletic, uh, so uh, it's going to be a great game. I mean, I mean, it's close to their home, and I'm sure they'll have a great home crowd there, but we're very excited. It's a great challenge for us to start the season off where we're at right now and going to Dallas. Our kids are very excited, I think, and they're looking forward to the challenge. It's going to be a heck of a challenge. Question? Jimbo, one of, the, one of the strengths of last year's team was the ability to focus on themselves and not worry about mm -hmm. who, who they're playing. What have you said from this team? You guys are I mean, obviously a big favorite. I, you know, I felt very good about that right now. I, I think uh, when we asked our guys to really lock in and as we develop doing camp, I've seen signs of that. I've been very pleased with that. Again, you don't know until you go play an opponent, but when we had scrimmages or big days or there were certain challenge days, I had them in camp would make, you know, simulate game day type atmosphere as far as how we wanted them to play and think and stuff. I was very pleased the way they stepped up. And every time we ask them to address an issue or do something, it it seemed to get done, you know what I mean, from that standpoint. So I think from that, really understanding what we're asking as a coaching staff, that uh, they could focus on the scene and the leadership of the team got that across. So you now I'm anxious to see, but from that standpoint, it seemed very good. Jimbo, you, uh, in Rashad, you have a guy who's uh, taking aim at some records that have lasted 47 years. So are the you going to be able to get him freed up enough this year and now that you don't have to? We'll go in the flow of the offense. I mean, he is a very focal point of our team, but we have other great players. And I think that's one of the things that makes us on offense so diverse and I think hard to play at times is that we don't force the ball to one guy. One guy that can get all the carries. If you look last year, I mean, he had three, basically 3,000-yard 3, guys, plus a, a tight end that had almost 600 yards. I mean, I think because if teams want to take guys away, they can. You've got to be able to be diverse and have your quarterbacks read and go to the one-on-one -on -one matchups, and that's how we do things. I mean, we'll have, we'll have our plays in which we want to go to him, but they take it away, we'll go to him. We feel very – I feel as confident right now on those other guys I have. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i very pleased with where they're at in their development, the other receivers. But going into year two with this defensive scheme, the flexibility that, that you guys have, mm -hmm. Are you able to kind of dictate matchups as a defense, or is it still a lot of reacting? With well, I mean, I think you know, defense uh, again, game plan going in, you can you can create matchups as because I think you know up front or in the secondary because you have guys that can play in the, can play on a slot or play in the nickel or play safety or play a corner. So from that standpoint, but you know, offenses still can try to force things too, just and how you teach on defense. And we have the ability if we want to match everybody across the board, we can do that. Or if we want to play. Play a right and left corner, or whatever we want to do. But and and with some of the players we have, sometimes that's not a bad thing to do, especially when you play no huddle teams. You're allowed to. It doesn't get you running all over the diagonal field, and you can line up, which would be a big key this weekend going against Oklahoma State. So we can do either one. Jimbo, a month ago, and yeah, will. Oh, sorry. Oh, you done? All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to keep going for a second. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I do, don't. Yeah. So a month ago, you said camp. Um, one of the big things of camp is identifying, I guess, the identity of your team. Now that camp is over, what is the identity of this team? 
You know, again, I think it's a very tight-knit group. I think it's a, a group that knows how to work. I think it's a group that can be very physical, but at the same time be very skilled. And I think that's that, to me, is the epitome of how you want to play football. You want to be able to be physical and down the guys up front that can run it or stop the run and be physical in the front seven. But at the same time, I always say this, just because you're physical don't mean you're skilled. Just because you're skilled don't mean you're physical. And I think uh, – being able to do both. And even our skilled guys can be physical, but at the same time we can play physical and skilled offensively or deep. We can run with you or we can line up and bang with you from a strength standpoint. And I think that's uh, something I'm very proud of. Now, we have to go play that way. It's not about what we can do. It's about what we must do and how we play. And that's, that's the thing we got to do. Now we got to see if we can take it to the field. How do you feel like this team's identity kind of differs from last year's team? I think uh, – I would say similar because I think last year you had maybe now some of the spots you, you're very sound with. Last year you weren't, but this year some of the things you were very sound with you weren't. This you know it just it, the difference is that there's new guys at new positions taking over. But at the same time I, th I do think they're very similar about how they approach things. You know what I mean? Uh, and I think uh, uh, this year's team knows it knows and knows what to do. I mean now it's just a matter of continually doing it over and over. I mean, last year's team, no matter what you said, till you get to that championship level, saying, are we really doing all the right things? Are we really doing things the right way? You know what I'm saying? And I think this, and now you know you know, but then the challenge is going and doing it every week. As far as how to work, how to mentally get ready, how to focus on little details like we're talking about on, on you know, each team and those types of things. To that end, Coach, you mentioned about a week ago that you had to go back and check <coughs> your camp notes from last year. What precipitated that? Were you seeing something you didn't like, or was there something? No, I always like to compare and learn. I try. I think history is a great teacher. I really do, and I think we have to either repeat things in camp that are continued success, or correct things. And I think you know, as you identify each team and you start to see some traits, you kind of go back. And I like to remind myself, good or bad, or sometimes you know, you always say, "Lad, you always." The thing about teams that you, you got to be remember. You always remember last year's team at the end of last year not at the beginning of last year. And that's why I think as a coach sometimes we get caught that, and fans we do. I mean, everybody does. Well, they're going to be like, well, no, that team that played it at, in the national championship game, that wasn't, that, that wasn't the same team at this time. I go back and I like to say, you know, I go back to questions. Okay, I got a question. I always make notes. I'm worried here. We got to develop here. And about the same number of worries, I may have had them in different areas, but it was about the same number of worries. We, you know, as you go back, and I think that's the things I would remind myself because I think sometimes a coach, you, it's not that you can allow yourself to be frustrated because you think, well, that ain't like we did them last year. Well, last year when? Last year at the beginning of the year or last year at the end of the year after that team developed and took, you know, and, and became itself. And I think that's what I did. And it was very similar as as as, as Nellie just said too, the personality of this team and it's a lot of the same. Couple question, not question marks, but guys, you feel good now. Do they take it to the field? Do they do this? And it's the same. It's it's very similar to this year. Uh, what do you say? What have you been able to see from a young defense? They only bring back four starters. Is there? How do you, I guess, scout them? Yeah. When, yeah. Well, you look at their backups. I mean, you know, when they got backup roles, you go deep into the film just to judge athletic talent. Uh, you know how well they're coaching. You know they're going to play their from Glenn. They're going to play hard. And they're going to be they're going to be sound and, and do things the right way. And no, you even research, you may have high school film on them. You may have athletic ability you knew from high school or people who knew them, and you research as much as you possibly can. Anything stand out when you're looking at those? A lot of that. I'm going to tell you what, they, they are up front. They're very dynamic. They can create some pressure. Secondary guys can run. They can one corner, ran 10 8 in high school coming out, so I mean, he can run a corner. And, but all of them, that's one thing Oklahoma State, if you go back and really research, they have great skill guys. Guys, they get kids out of Texas and Oklahoma and. You do a great job of getting a couple of junior college guys here and there that really fit their needs and, and, and make big plays. In general, what are some of the challenges that come with preparing for an opening game? <laughs> Lord of my, I hate opening games sometimes. <laughs> I don't say you hate them, but you 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 chase jokes. You got you know you start chasing. What if they do this? What if you do? I mean, you just have a checklist of things. You know, have we covered this? Have we covered this? Have we covered this? Have we covered this? And that's all you can do. I mean, and then you know a guy's history or what they've done or. You know what you read in the paper or whatever and you did but you know when you teach that's why i think we do try to do a good job in camp of early in camp not going against your opponent now we played game plan for them last spring we looked at things and we did things during camp that i knew would help us in our game plan so really we were game plan for them but in essence all right you go over all the different kinds of defensive fronts every possible front you could go over how you would handle each play 
every blitz, every of you know, how people do things that have ever done them. And so you try to teach conceptually. So if they come out in something that they haven't shown in the past, but hey, this is the this, this is really this. So when you teach it, you don't teach you don't memorize plays or memorize defenses. You understand this is our play, this is the concept on defense, these are how these two concepts fit together. I think it's very important when you coach that way, especially early in the season. So if people do things you don't haven't seen or they've done in the off season, that you can make you know a series or two, get the adjustment, get the call, and and do it that way. I mean, from that standpoint, you always worry because people are always going to do different things in the off season. That's the unknown that and you got to be careful not to chase your tail all day. Jimbo, you you complimented the receivers a few times already. Um, what have they done in the last week or so to really kind of? I understand how to get open versus man. We play against press and two deep, three deep, getting in the holes, how to set in holes, how to separate, how to rub off each other, how to, you know, whatever it is to create space in certain coverages where the ball is going to be thrown. I think just got a greater knowledge of not only their assignment, but then it, it was assignment, then there's technique. All right, say, so okay, run eight steps. Well, if I run eight steps, but there's, this guy's in my way on the way and this guy's in my way, how do I get there? You know what I mean? And how to set in that hole. And I think just being football players. You know what I mean? Just, okay, I know my assignment. Now they're working on the technique and relaxing. And as I say, not, I say it's like when you move in a new neighborhood. I say it's all the time. When you don't know what you're doing. You don't know your way home. Every stop sign you stop and look at, you know, am I going to oh, that right, left? Now they're running the stop signs. You know what I mean? They're going through them fast and getting to the holes. And James, the timing, the rhythm, the comfort level. Ball's not hitting the ground. You know what I'm saying? In practice, I mean, very, very few times. And, and, as it may be just a guy makes maybe defense a guy makes a real good play or a tip or something like that, but not just running around, but how to get open, deep, short, and a lot of different guys, and that's what it's got me excited about it. So how do you how do you handle the rotation? Last year was, it was pretty easy. Well, last year you see rotations are based on what guys can do. I mean, last year you were very unique, and you had three guys that were experienced and could do everything. Sometimes it'd be based on what guys do well. I mean, you don't ask guys early in their careers. And like we didn't ask Kenny and KB to do things all the time that they weren't capable of. I mean, everybody works about the rotation, but what I'm more worried about is guys that are in the game that can do what we're asking them can, to do. And it's hard to have a guy be able to do everything. You know what I mean? You call a certain set of plays with one guy, a certain set with the other. But now what I'm happy about, what I've, what's really been evolving in the last week and a half, well, you see a smile on my face, that knowledge and range has really grown. I feel much more comfortable that way. But, we'll, but we also need to develop that depth to see – who will handle game time situations, who, who can get in the game and, and do that. But at the same time, we've worked a lot of combinations with Jameis through, through camp. I mean, this group's went with the one, this group's went with the one. I mean, he's gotten a lot of time with every one of those guys. I mean, individual time, we do a lot of one-on-one, two-on-two, -on -two, red zone, half-line pass. I mean, we do t so many things that he's working with so many different guys. He feels as comfortable with as many guys now, I think, as we have since we've been here. Does he come to you and tell you about some of those traits? That oh, yeah. I mean, we sit back here and watch. See, that's one thing I do when I get to watch. You can't read him, can you? No. I can read him. Yeah, I mean, guys, you know, all right, this route, we got, let's take him on. These two routes are the ones we're having problems with. You two go out to practice, fix it. You know what I mean? And things like that. I mean, that's where the, that, that communication line has come in. with. And, and me being a quarterback and Randy being back there, we can tell, you know, all right, this guy. Because it's all about a quarterback feeling comfortable and reading the body language of the guy running the route. Where he's going to be, how he's going to make his break, where he's, you know what's going to happen. And um, this summer, those guys did a ton of work, and they got a lot of that in too when we weren't even around. But Jameis is real good about that. He understood, and I think that's one of the things he learned from the Mannings. You know, Peyton go out there and take one or two routes in a day and just run them 50 times, and really get the guy to know a guy's mannerisms, his body language. You know what I mean? I think he did a lot of that this summer. Part of the reason why it took until that last week and a half for him to get comfortable, just because when you have more receivers that you're moving in and out of there. Well, yeah, and then and then I'm a t well that and those guys on defense over there covering are pretty daggone good too now. So you you got two things. I mean, and then you got guys over there covering them, and then those guys had to learn not just what to do. I got I, I got PJ on, me, I got Darby on, me, I got Jalen on, me, I got Tyler. I got to get off this. You know what I mean? And then they had and then they've gotten better because of who they're competing against and gotten more con and their confidence has grown. You know your two starting cornerbacks like back healthy today. Yes, yes, they'll be back in practice. What kind of conversations did you have with Carlos about his bigger role this year? Uh, well, not a lot as far as don't put the pressure on yourself. I mean, just go play, get yourself in the best possible shape, understand the mental conditioning what you got to have, and be ready for the you know, the added carries. But you, don't, I don't think he has to do anything special. He just has to be mentally prepared to do it every play. 
and just don't put pressure on yourself. Just, just react and let yourself, let your natural abilities take over. But just make sure you understand all situations. And then and working on the mental situation. Understand how to run the ball on first and ten as compared to third and one. Or second and ten even. You know, or, or a chance to take a two, you know, I can get a two-yard gain if I try to bounce or maybe I need to stick it up in there and get a five-yard gain. You know what I mean? Times of, of the game, situations, field zones. I mean, that type of stuff is educating. And I think he's done a real nice job of that in camp. Tim, what kind of camp has Derek Mitchell had? Really good. Best one he's had by far. Feel very comfortable, Derek. I mean, Derek's we have him as a starter up there in that front now. I mean, he's bowed his way up to Desmond now. And I mean, feel very he's, he's healthy. Right. His his whole issue all the time was not anything but just healthy. And he had there were legit injuries and we well, say they're freak injuries or whatever, but just he had a run of bad luck. But he is a very athletic, big, good player. What yeah, I was going to ask, what does he give you up for? Well, he's athletic. Ben can run. He was a heck of a basketball player. Remember, his dad was a basketball player here, but he was a heck of a I mean, he's athletic, strong, powerful. Can run, change direction. I mean, just a big body and a, you know, a, a little man's agility and a big man's body. Gary, sorry, Gary Smith. Yeah, coach. Uh, first day of practice, I'd ask you about the progress of Demarcus Walker and where you saw him. And I'm just wondering what kind of wow. camp did he go on to have and what, what had, hopes you have. Had one of the best season. camps we've had of any player we had. Had one of the best camps. I mean, extremely quick. Weight went down just a hair, but lean muscle mass really went up. Quickness, agility, power, consistency. I thought he had a tremendous – he'll have a huge role for us. I mean, he'd, he'd be like a starter right now. Could start in two seconds. Okay. And one other thing, I was talking to Mario Edwards, and Mario was talking about his relationship with DeMarcus. And he said DeMarcus last year actually knew the playbook just as well, if not better than he was. And DeMarcus was helping him with, you know, aspects of, of – of the plays and the formations and things like that and everything. So has DeMarcus brought uh, a cerebral role to his position and, you know, is... is oh, he's he, a very intelligent guy. He yeah. works hard at it, takes a lot of pride in knowing the right thing. He become, he's very accountable. Very accountable that way. You can depend on him. Uh, and uh, like I say, not only physically gifted, but he takes a lot of pride in knowing things the right way. As In the classroom, he does also. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Tom D'Angelo, do you have one? Yeah, hey, Jimbo. Hey, Tom, how you doing, buddy? Okay, uh, you kind of both ways when you've opened the season with a, a real high profile game like last year on Labor Day and then uh -huh. um, some that weren't. So, does it get their attention more uh, in the type of game you have this year? And also, uh, did last year having the success on that stage, did that jumpstart that team a little bit? I, I don't think there's any doubt. I mean, definitely, when you have your opponent, you know, it's Oklahoma State, they won 41 games in the last four years in the history of their program. It definitely gets your attention. You know, you've got to bring your A game from day one. And, uh, you know, I think being in the limelight as far as being where we went to and some of the games we played in, I think it will definitely, hopefully, help and rub off for the future here this year. I mean, that's that's the plan. Hopefully, as long as you can consistently be in those games, that your kids get used to that atmosphere and environment. It, uh, one thing, one, one more, and just, uh -huh. uh, for us, and Travis Rudolph, just talk about his camp and uh, anything you saw that you didn't know when you were recruiting him. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you what, now, you talk about a guy who's very mature, I mean, way above his years, uh, had a little setback with a foot, but, I mean, he's back to full speed now, running, running routes. Uh, you talk about a guy sticking his foot in the ground, great burst, great speed, ball skills. I'll tell you the other thing, how intelligent he is. I mean, he, he, he knows three or four positions. I mean, he can play his slot on both sides, and he can play outside at X and Z. I mean, that is extremely rare for a guy that young. And he has the ability to do both, too. I mean, and you talk about a guy, you talk about being able to read a guy and run routes, exceptional. But I've been pleased with all those freshmen. Those three guys made a lot of development. Will you use Travis in multiple positions? Oh, yeah, we will. Yes. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Tom. Hey, Coach, when it comes to the first games of the year, do you prefer an easier kind of game to kind of get the season going, or do you kind of like getting a real opponent in week one battle to start the year off? I'll tell you when week two comes up. <laughs> 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 no, I, it's great. I mean, it, it just sometimes depends on your team. I mean, but, you know, I, I like it. It's exciting. It's good. It's good for camp. It's good for the off season. generates a lot of interest. I think it's good for college football. I have no problem with that. I mean, so you can't do it all the time because schedules don't allow you to do it that way. But I'm very excited about this and very pleased and looking forward to the opportunity. I think it's I think it's a great opportunity and I think it's good for college football. Jimbo, unique uh, are there any unique challenges because you're playing at a neutral site game in a, a really state of the art stadium by ooh and all your guys a little bit? Well, I mean, it is different. I've heard that. That's why we're going to go out Thursday night and Friday. We may, which I usually don't do. We may stop by and take a half hour before we do our walkthrough somewhere and have them turn all the lights and the bells and whistles on, catch a few punts here and there. Or, 
throw some balls around just to get used to the atmosphere and get to get that out that part of it out of the way which is very unique but i've heard it's different and you know so we're going to try and eliminate that clutter and get that thing taken care of before we go in there so is the experience of the experience of playing you know like you did last year those guys that played at pit on a monday night when that was kind of a, a, a lesson but the same thing does that kind of help a little bit with this game? i don't think there's any doubt any, as many times as you can be in those atmospheres and environments when you become more comfortable and it becomes more normal i think any time like that it's it is Will Bobo be eligible to play? I'm sorry? Will Bobo be eligible to play? Bobo will he's here right now. We, we got some guys ahead of him right now, so we'll see what's going on. Well, we're handling everything inside and uh, take care of that. What about John Franklin? Is he going to see much action in wide receiver? Oh, I don't know. He's, 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 he'll be traveling. He'll be traveling. Jim, what are the recruiting benefits of a game like this? You mentioned uh, Oklahoma State gets a lot of guys out of Texas, and that's more of a a natural recruiting boundary for them, but what, what type of We're in there too. Do? We're in there, Texas, and, and we're in on some players. And uh, I think anytime Florida State, with, with our national brand and the things we do, and I think for your university, it helps get a lot of recognition. But I think for our program, I mean, that we're willing to, hey, you can go play in a kickoff classic in Dallas. You can go play in the national championship game. You can go play in the championship. You know, you can play in all these different venues. Excuse me. I think it's really good. I think it helps recruiting, not just in Texas, but in general, that your kids are willing to. Now they'll get on that national stage in those national games. I think it does nothing but help your university and your and your school and your football program. Jim, with this being uh, Coach Kelly's first game as defensive coordinator, mm -hmm. is it will you be more active or, or same as you were? I'll be same. And just like Jeremy last year in his first game. I mean, hey, the guy's hired to do a job. He knows how to do it. I'm very comfortable with what he's done. I know who he is, what he's done through spring and fall. He's got a great staff. And Charles has been in a lot of battles and situations throughout his career. I have utmost confidence in him and can handle the defense. And there's so much talk about spread offenses, and, and but all your defensive coaches have gone against mm -hmm. all kinds of spread offenses. And, 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 and we're and we're and I hate to say it, we can do all those we do all those things in versions too. I mean we, we have the ability to do that. We just got the ability to line up and pound you at the same time, which I, I like that diversity. So now is it totally like they do? No, but uh, I think going against us and a lot of the three and four wide sets and all the different things. I think and we you know we've had quarterback runs in the past and all the things they do that way. So. Uh, but they've all had experience against a lot of it. And I'm, it's becoming the norm instead of the exception anymore. We're becoming the exception. <laughs> We're the oddball. Uh, that kind of works to your favor sometimes, too. That uh, middle linebacker looks like EJ and Reggie really kind of gone back and forth throughout camp. Yeah, they'll both be playing and rotating in and out consistently. I mean, how they go this week. But, I mean, it's like having two co-starters there. Both guys are doing excellent. I mean, and not from a lack of a player, but from a lack of – but from a – Advantage of having two guys you feel very comfortable with. As a coach, do you like to see that those guys push each other to that? Oh level? no, that, that's what it's all about. When you know that when you can when you can't take a day off because you know that guy behind you is going to take your job, don't be Wally Pip. <laughs> you know who Wally Pip is. <laughs> he was a guy who decided to take a break and let Lou Gehrig start one day. Two thousand one hundred thirty games later, he got his job back. <laughs> He didn't really get a job back. I mean, you know that that is a great thing. I mean, that's one of the things. But that, that's one of the great things when you play on a team that has good players. The level of competition and your execution and your development, you know, it's, it's that much greater because you know there's somebody behind you that's challenging you, and that's a good thing. And you know, you don't mind. And sometimes that takes a lot of uh, tread off the tire too. You don't have to play quite as many reps for a season, or when you get to the NFL, that body, your body's only got so many collisions in. It. That's that's a good thing. Jimbo, two of the freshmen you've talked a lot about in camp, found the way in the depth chart on defense. I'm talking about Jacob Pugh and Trey Marshall. Just talk about a little bit of what have they impressed you in camp to put them in that position of play? Well, number so one, athleticism and size and, and have the physical maturity to, to get in there. You know, Featherson's in that. Him and Pugh are all they're right there in that too deep with them. I mean, uh, I've been, I tell you what, I've been very pleased with that whole group. But those two, physically, and then Trey being here in the spring really helped knowledge-wise all the different positions he can play. And then very good special teams guys because they can run, they're big, they're long, they're athletic, can play in space or block you. You know what I'm saying? So I think even from a uh, uh, special team standpoint, they're doing a great job. But there'll be there'll be quite a few freshmen that we feel very comfortable about playing. Did you know with Pew going in that you were going to put him more up on the line instead of like a true linebacker? Yeah, we, we knew we were going to play that some. We knew we were going to play with that a lot and have the ability to do it and see what he could do. And uh, tell you what, he's going to be a big guy now. He's going to be a big guy. He can run, he can rush that passer, but he can but he can drop. He can run in space. I mean, he's got some very unique abilities. Been very pleased with Jacob. Coach, you talked about using a quarterback rotation. How difficult has that been for you guys to prepare, just not knowing how many different guys you can You know, you just, you know, we prepare for the plays. You know guys run, and we prepare for all quarterback runs and passes, and you know, you try to study what guys do and don't do and what their strengths are. And 
you know, that's something, I hate to say that, that's getting to be more of a norm too. I mean, those things that are now, everybody's kind of doing it. So, I mean, it's always a problem, but it's, it's one you face basically at least every other week. Just when you go back and look at their film, is there something you can see as far as their execution? I think they have like the longest active streak and like scoring 20 plus points. Uh, they're, they're very diverse. They're very athletic. They're very well coached and they call plays very well. I mean, they, they keep you off balance and not scared to do things and very aggressive with how they play. Get to the edges, but be physical inside. Uh, I mean, they've just been a very, very good offensive football team for a long period of time. With you guys going into the game and everyone saying, you know, they are got all this talent, they're number Don't one. Don't the cheese. No, no. We can't but, eat the cheese. But, you know, people, when they talk about them, they talk about how young they are. Do you really try to stress to your guys just what they've done over a long period of time? Well, I mean, you know, you know, the history tells you they're going to be well coached. They're going to play hard. They're going to play fundamentally sound. They're going to be a very good football team. So you better match that. And you have to play the best you can play. And that's, and that's how you have to approach it. How would you say it's uh, I'm sorry. Uh, confidence, you know, this year compared to last year? Ours? West. Same. He's always confident. <laughs> He's always confident. I would, I would say very similar. Say very similar. I mean, as crazy as it sounds, I mean, say we should, it should be more, but he was confident last year. I mean, you know, he, he's, he's very confident, very similar to where he was. I know he went out there and he was pit last year, first game. He did. And I mean, now, again, we play well around him, too. I mean, so that's the thing about quarterback you got to keep remembering. You got to continue to play well around the guy. I mean, it's, you know, it's just like. So like a pitcher, he, he can get 20 ground balls row. If they go between the shortstop's legs, you know, don't matter. I mean, we got to block around them. we got to run to the right. That's what I'm happy about our receivers and backs and picking up you know, blitzes and all the blitz packages we've thrown at them. And I, I'm very excited with the blitzes and the sights and the hots and all the different things we've done. It's, I'm very excited about that. So I think he feels very comfortable with the guys around him. Jim, I think it was the, the first press conference of the before uh, preseason practice started. He said, an Orange Bowl or a BCS Bowl or a conference championship used to be considered a, a really good season. Players are saying Dallas to Dallas this year, that end that we have is Dallas to Dallas this year. Is anything short of at least reaching the national championship game going to be uh, a yeah, I'm not worried about reaching the national championship game. I'm worried about playing well. Our goal was to be in the national championship every year. I, w I want this team to be the best team it can be, to play as good as it can play, and then we'll live with the results. Do you have any issue with the, the everybody saying Dallas to Dallas? Or? I don't listen. <laughs> Jimbo, I'm going to Dallas on Thursday. <laughs> on the two-deep depth chart they handed out, I don't see Matthew Thomas. Is there any update with him? Ankle. Got an ankle screwed up right now. He, got, he had that ankle. He should be. Hopefully, he is getting better, though. I mean, we, we, he was having a really good camp, too. He was having a really good camp. But he won't. I mean, he, he had swelling and banged and bruised and purple all the way back to his heel. Understanding it's a rotation, Kermit listed as the starter. What does he give you in that slot position? Well, I tell you, the thing that got me excited, one is, I mean, a guy can flat run through. Two, he's dynamic with the ball in his hand. But three, he's physical. He's a short guy, but he's strong. And the thing, other thing is, Kermit's really made it, I mean, he, I, I'm very happy how he plays without the ball. See, it's more important to receiver to play better without the ball than he is with it. Because he's got to get, that's the way he gets open. And that, he's one of the guys I'm talking about. Well, I mean, just how to set in the hole, how to run a route versus this coverage, that coverage versus this leverage, go inside. I mean, just being dependable, getting where he's got to get to, and releasing on press, and you know, I mean, just extremely comfortable with what he, he's really evolving into a very, very good receiver. Has that started to come on in the last week and a half or so? Oh yeah, I mean, I saw it coming even through spring camp and fall. I mean, but I wanted, to, you know, Kenny, Kenny. I mean, even so, you know, the summer, the guys were talking about him this summer out there. I was wanting to see how it would go into fall camp with all the different looks, and I bet he'd been very well. Yes. And Rashad, I see Rashad is listed as a starting punt returner. Yes. Any trepidation at all putting him back there? I mean, you did that with Kenny last year and it worked out well. What does he give you as a, as a punt returner? Catches the football. That's all number one goal. Say. Number yeah. one goal. Number one goal, catch the football. Give me a first down. Anything else is gravy. I mean, you got to get the ball back. And that guy's had experience. He's been there. Now, I think uh, Bobo in the future could be a guy. I think uh, Kermit has done a really nice job. I'll tell you, Marquez White's ridiculous back there catching. I mean, he's got ball skills that are incredible. Uh, we have quite a few guys there that uh, could do that, but uh, very comfortable with Rashad doing that right now. Jim, well, what are some of the factors that go into running back rotation? Is it just keeping guys fresh, hot hand? What it could be hot hand, hand and you know, field position, certain plays, certain things you're liking to do. Uh, but, you know, think about these guys. I think these three guys can do everything. I think they pass block well. I think they run inside well. 
And I think they run outside well. I mean, I really do. And, all, and some of you, some say run the counter or power better. One run the zone. They both really jump cut well, but they they can, can stick. They can hit those seams and those in those zone plays. I'm, you know, just how we feel in the rotation. We'll two, two of those guys haven't played college football yet. Any concerns about that part of it? Oh, you always can. I mean, as far as can you wait and see? I mean, you have to do it, but. I know what they're doing in practice, and that's what I go off of. And that's what, again, those are again the things that I was talking about, you were talking about a little bit ago. I mean, you still don't know, do you know, but at least the work they put in and the consistency they put it in with in practice and against who they're going against, I feel very comfortable. You said during the scrimmage you guys took the blue jersey off of Dalvin. How did he look kind of being, I assume he was probably one of the top number one running backs in that rotation that day? How did he look with that? Yes, he did. He did really good. We made a lot of good plays, caught the ball. That's the thing about all of them. Catch, they can run. You know what I mean? The pass, I was ran right inside, outside. Very, very disciplined in his running. But I liked. I mean, read his cuts, understood the blocking scheme, where he wanted to be, how he needed to be there, uh, and you know, took care of the football. That was the other thing. That's the thing we haven't had a lot of. Putting the ball on the ground. That's uh, blessed. We're good. Yeah. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, coach. No.